came to order. Um, and the first item of business is approving the minutes of the last meeting, June 11th, 2020. I noticed, uh, I noticed as I looked at the minutes that uh, there, the typographical error that was in the uh, agenda of the last meeting is, was carried over to the minutes. And that is the second line down under approved motor vehicle abatement reports. Um, I think there's been a, a number that was supposed to, um, I don't know what the correct entry there is, but it's not right, 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 now, or it's not correct right now. Okay, so approve. Um, so the minutes, the minutes need a correction? Yes. Okay, and, and you're not sure what the correct amount is? Well, I, um, I looked at it, I remember looking at it during the meeting and noting at the time that there needed to be a decimal point there. Oh, okay, I've, I've actually, it, the, the correct entry should be $12,995.58. Instead of a decimal point, there's a three there in, in the uh, minutes. Okay, um, would you consider approving this with, it, with the correction to be made? Yes. Uh, well, I'm looking at the other entries. Just um... I think I could bring up that and correct it yeah. on, on the fly if you like. Yeah. Um, I think it would be suitable. Other than, other than that, I have no other um, corrections to make. So that's, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll, move for I'll, I'll move for approval with the correction. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I can. Morning. Yeah, I was at the last meeting, so I won't vote. So glad to see you, Ken. Yeah, Liz, when can we see you? Well, um, yeah, what? you're. Uh... I just realized my camera is down. Hello, oh, gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay. I am live and in color. Um, I did get to most of these appeals um, personally. Um, I didn't get into all the homes, but I did uh, actually get to view most of them. Uh, I didn't okay. get to some empty lots. About okay. Minutes. So um, I guess we have to go into executive session to address these. Is, um, yes and no. I mean, I think that, you know, well, if, um, if we're going over the physical um, documents and what was presented, those are really... Um, okay, we've got, a, we've got an extra participant right now. Okay. Um, the, the only one that's here is Angela Mills. Who no, is... there's, there's a sixth person. I don't know. Um, it may be a member of the public. Okay, let me make sure they're getting in. Uh, attendees. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so they're, oh, it's David Burgess. Oh, well, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll allow him to talk, you think? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to put him on our panelists. Is he, is he uh, talking Promote to, to us? panelists. So I've promoted him to panelists. Is he talking to us from his mountain lair? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about mountain. Have you been to his house? Turn on your camera, David. Oh. Hey, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can't see you, but we can hear you. Aren't you looking? <laughs> Let me see what well, I'm doing. I was going to say, gentlemen, before we, um, before we go into executive session to consider these abatements, um, did you want to, um, you know, formally say, you know, there's no participants from the public at this point, and um, we're going to adjourn. Well, to can, why don't we, um, maybe we should go to the discussion on staffing and uh, so that when we go to executive session, when we go to executive session, we don't, uh, we don't have to come back to public. Right. That's fine. The public. Okay. Is, That's fine. So, so there's some discussion that you want to have about staffing, budgeting, reappointment for board members. I got reappointed the other night. I watched it live. You did. Oh, it was so exciting. Oh yeah. Um, uh, how, so you were reappointed at the board of assess board of selectmen's meeting. I at the uh, let's get it right now town council meeting. Town council meeting. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the town council has reappointed you. Um, for and what is your when well, is your I, term expire? I have I have not seen the official paperwork, but I I watched it live, so uh, I'm go, I'm good until June thirtieth, twenty twenty three. Hey, excellent. And I think the other two gentlemen are are still in the middle of their term respective terms. That's great. Right. Um, well, I think the question was too, and and this was uh, proposed by Lauren Aldrich, our local. Um, liaison with the Department of Revenue with the Commonwealth. 
Um, she suggested that I reach out to you gentlemen and see if um, you all are on board to resume another term for another couple of years. Um, hopefully I don't drive you nuts. Well, they're in the middle of the, these two gentlemen are in the middle of their terms, so I think they're stuck. Yeah, well. I volunteered. Well, 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 we like it that way, so that, yeah, yeah. that works out for the best. Yeah. Yeah, um, I forget. I think Lee's got another year, and I think Ken has two years. Lee, I thought we just re-upped you, didn't we, Lee? No, uh, no, I've got another year. Okay, so when does your term year. expire? Next year. So in June 30th of 2021? Right, that's what I remember. And I think Ken is, yeah, and I think Ken is 2022. Right. I have no idea. I don't remember and then I, I, I think there's a sort of an informal two-term limit. And so uh, at 2023, right. I'm gone. Don't go. <laughs> I just got you. Uh, the world will change by then. Uh, well, well yeah. I, I, I hope it's a little bit easier to, hand, to manage for all of us. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, you know, what we do <laughs> is we go on to Gateway and we fill in this form that says, you know, what your terms are and if you've been reappointed in your case, Richard, that was something that needed to be revised. And Lee, we just did you back in February, I believe. Right. So we are good to go. And Ken, we're going to be hanging on to you till 22, so don't go anywhere. Um, okay. As far as staffing goes, right now um, we are down Lori. And of course, David has been offering his services on a part-time basis for a while now. Um, what they've asked me to do is instead of hiring somebody right away, is uh, to take use of our, our uh, vendor services, such as uh, Roy Bishop and Bishop Associates, and um, you know, use uh, the uh, vision services if we need them and so forth, to fill in the void until we can get more, uh, more assistance and find out you know, where we are as far as needs and assessment. Um, we do have a cyclical uh, program of inspection that we have to uh, stay on board with, with the state of Massachusetts. Um, it says that we need to, um, you know, view properties every 10 years, I believe it is, Dave. Is that correct? Yep. Five. 10 or five? 10. Okay. 10 for physical inspections. So every time we do a permit or every time we um, go out for an abatement hearing, you know, once I do a physical inspection of a property, that can be, real, you know, also taken off the list of things to look at. But we do have 4,800 accounts to get to before the end of 2023 fiscal year. Say so, that again. I'm sorry. Please say that again. We have 4,800 accounts yeah. left to visit by 2023. Wow. Okay. So there's a lot of work for this office. And I think many times, um, and this has been uh, questions that have been asked by me to me by the manager, um, well, don't you have less work because of COVID and the reduction in permits? And I think it's gonna be important for us to express to the administration, to HR, that um, you know, our role is more than just valuing properties that are under construction or being subdivided. Uh, we have quite a few things that we, we take, um, we appraise and consider as part of our positions. Um, every year, every business has to fill in a form of list that has to be analyzed, data entered into the appraisal program for personal property. We have to look for new businesses and et cetera. Um, then every time someone just quit claims their property from themselves to their new husband or wife, or if there's a divorce and they're taking people off, or if they're realigning their property to merge it or separate it. If they get an approval from wetlands or from planning and zoning, it may affect assessment and change. All those factors um, need to be put into the, the mass appraisal system and considered. Um, the other thing is every permit that's processed, um, whether it's for a deck, a shed, a pool, uh, a generator. How many people have done that lately that you know of? For each of those, those all have to be data entered into the system and they have to be considered as part of the real estate value. You know? um, this takes manpower. Right now, um, it's really only myself and Teresa as full time. I, I'm sorry, who asked the question that assuming that somehow the assessor's office had less work because of COVID? The manager. Oh, really? Yeah, Paul Bachman. But you know, in fairness, um, many people do not know what the role of the assessor's office is. Um, okay. They do feel that it's more of a role of appraisal of real estate only. 
and uh, there, there's far more to it. Um, we appraise the cars, we appraise the, the businesses, we appraise the real estate. Um, we keep track of your records of ownership and the impact of changes to uh, your records, such as planning, zoning, wetlands. Um, these are all things that make an impact on the value and the status of your property. Um, and the, you know, the status of your record is more important today than it ever has been. It's a, a, a record of keeping track of not only your assessment for tax purposes, but banks are using it for um, you know, the official record when they're looking at appraising your property for refinancing, if you're looking for a, a credit uh, you know, to, to show the, that you're credit worthy. Um, these are all things that are, are impacting, impacted by our records. The insurance company uses it for uh, the official record to um, use when calculating your insurance. Um, these are things that are important. You know, if something devastating happens to your property, we have the record of what was there before the devastation. You know, Liz, what crosses my mind is um, you might sometime ask Paul if, if you'd like, he'd like you to give a short presentation to the town council. Well, that was one of the things that I've been looking at. Um, I know the International Association of Assessing Officers, um, the MAAO also have, um, you know, video presentations of that, that nature. Um, and sometimes it's good to have a formal presentation as well as a talk. Uh, with the town council or with the, um, the powers that be so that they can get a fuller picture of what we do. Because um, not only do we look at things that we appraise, we also look at tax relief for the blind, the disabled, the seniors. Um, you know, those are, those are um, you know, excellent programs and I'm proud that we product, per, you know, participate in that process, but it's time consuming. Um, we have to distribute applications. We have to process applications. We have to determine whether or not they're uh, qualified or not. They have to support those in that, that qualification with documentation. It's, you know, a constant process. I have not seen Teresa sit still for 10 seconds since I've gotten here. Uh, she's been amazing. She's just flying around like a cat on fire because uh, every time somebody wants to do something, they need an abutters list. Liz? I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd also add that the work and the uh, uh, um, consider, c consideration that goes into uh, the recommendation for the annual tax rate is something that's very visible um, and very important to, to, to the state of the town. And if I'm not mistaken, some promises were made about, um, about assessing that whole business. Uh, later on this year or next in the coming fiscal year, if I'm not mistaken, Dave, there was some sort of, yeah, there was, there's, there's there was some kind of a of, pledge made. Well, yeah, there was a pledge made that the town manager <clears throat> wanted to take a look at the uh, residential exemption for the going forward. Yes. For this coming year. Um, I think he has already put that aside. Okay. I don't, can't see that happening this year. We have to check with them. Uh, I mean, there's just a phenomenal amount of work has to be done on that in a short period of time. Right. But I, I do recall when the tax rate was, uh, when they once again voted not to have uh, uh, two different tax rates. Right. Um, yeah. Um, there was some concern from certain council members that um, they would want to, they would so, sort of wanted to revisit the issue with a little more data. And there was kind of a, there was a commitment made, which probably can be pushed back uh, to collect that data. And I, I got the sense that the assessor's office was the one that was going to be tasked with doing that. Am I wrong about my memory, uh, my memory on that? No, we would definitely be the ones who would be tasked with getting it. Yes. But um, in no small way, because of my situation with health and one thing or another, that has changed considerably since then. Yeah. And the manager's aware of it. But... There's nothing to stop us going ahead and going, giving a bit more detail of an estimate and explaining the whole process a lot more um, clearly than we did last year for the council. Sure. There are clearly some council members who have this on their mind, and I think it was, this was not a live issue, as I understand it, when we had a select board in the town meeting. But now we have council members who I think have this on their mind about um, tax rates. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. The council's very aware of the tax rate, but you know, the select board did go through the same thing about 15 years ago. Yeah. And decided at that time not to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so let me ask. Can, if I can ask this question, the the peak, the peak, the, the 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 proper status quo staffing in the assessor's office is how many, how many people? I think it varies depending on the responsibility of each community. But you're broaching forty thousand people in this community and having two full time people to manage it just a little bit too much. If you think about it, um, even our that's, tax that, that's two full time, including you, right? That's including myself, yeah. Okay, myself so, and one person. Okay, um, and be, and prior to that, prior before you came on, in whatever golden age Dave can recall, how many um, how many staffers did Dave have when he was properly? Um, well, we, we, we never had more than two full, two full time and one on the assessor. So we had three. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you also did you also did the adjacent town too. That was one thing that they said. They, they had pointed out that um, the assessor's office is handled Pelham. Um, so I'd let David speak to that. Yeah, we, we did handle it at that time, Ken, to be honest. And um, yeah, uh, this is a bit hard for me because I was the one that actually put forward the idea of the changing of the staff. But my envision, what I had envisioned was a full-time person shared between the assessors and the collectors, because there are times in the year that the um, the person that is in a position, glorious position, is not real busy. I mean, in the middle of the winter, you're not doing building permits. Yeah. Uh, but in the summer, you are, and so you you, you could have switch it around, and you could also have the person then help on the counter more and relieve Teresa a bit more for some of the stuff she needs to do. A third, a second alternative was, as Liz has pointed out, a half-time position, and also then support from outside world, uh, in the form of a uh, Mr. Bishop or a Vision or whoever, to do the building permits. You know, the, the, the building, but again, the building permits have now taken on a whole new life of their own, because the majority of people are not going to let us into their house. We're going to have to do something from the outside. Uh, we need to, ex- I would think we should explore using uh, questionnaires for the building permits to see what we can get from people and then following up with two or three percent of inspections if we can get them and then checking. The, I mean, the exteriors are easy enough. Nobody should object to us going up and measuring a, a new addition or whatever's on the house. Well, we can certainly do that easy enough and we have the plans for it as well. So I'm just uh, checking to make sure we don't have any attendees that I'm not let in. Okay. Um, do do other members have any? I I'm curious, Dave. In the past, and Dave's sort of our institutional memory here. Sure. Um, <laughs> has the board of assessors ever had an advocacy role or any sort of role in terms of um, discussing staffing with either town meeting or the select board? More support role. Uh, most of the support, most of the discussion will come through the finance department, and then the the, the uh, the board has been relatively quiet since uh, when I started in whatever, a hundred years ago. Yeah. The board was a working board and uh, they actually went down and did some of the permits and things like that. Ah. Well, oh, I think they froze. Mm-hmm. All right. There you are. There you are. You froze for just a second. We Dave. froze and I don't know that we heard it. You know, we heard the whole thought. When you, you were talking about when you first came on the, uh, as assessor, the board was a working board. Yeah. And as much as they would go and do the permits and they would review some of the properties and go through them. And at that time we had in the office three and a half people. <clears throat> so it, was, it has changed over time. But the advent of the, com- advent of the computer has made that change considerably. You know, we can do things quicker with the uh, Motor vehicle excise abatement process uh, before we do the commitment and all the rest. So Teresa's job in one way has become lesser, but we have pushed more on her over the time and that she will do personal property now. She does oh, about 80% of the personal property entry, leaving the bigger and more difficult ones for whoever's uh, Liz or myself to do. 
and uh, so she's doing that and we are, we do a lot more than some towns do we send out a lot of stuff that people don't do we send out the res the um, personal exemptions every year and, and, and the form of list every year along with a copy of the previous year's uh, personal property so people can do it all you're required to do by law is put a notice up and say the time's due come in and get your form well, I would think so, you almost have to have two and a half people just to give Teresa a break so somebody else could fill in when she's not there. Otherwise, yeah, Liz has got to answer. That's the, where I found a lot of the problem is yeah. there's no one for, for relief. Um, yeah. I'm trying to get out into the field and do more field work yeah. for, the, uh, for the community. And if I go out, um, Teresa's here on her own. Yeah. What happened to the sharing with the collector of a person? Um, Teresa is sharing with the collector right now. My only one person is actually sharing with the collector. Oh, I had the impression it would be Teresa, Liz, and another person that would share between you and the that collector. Was my, and that's that what was I think book. is re reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And that went away or that's? Um, it just never evolved yet. Oh. So, and um, I, isn't Teresa retiring? No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. She's so, a young one. She's telling me my her road is getting shorter. So, so it sounds I to make to me, sure that we have someone trained in. It sounds um, to me as though there's some value in having the board educate itself. That's the three of us sure. on on how the office works and how it gets pro and how the work gets done, and also what work is perhaps um, well that we're having trouble getting done. Mm -hmm. Is that? Is that a, I take it that's the I point. I am doing my very best to try to, um, you know, put together something formal. I'll run it past you all before okay. it goes anywhere else. Um, and, and so when, um, I'm trying to think, when does the staffing issue, when is the, in the mechanism of determining staffing in the town hall? When, Basically, what, what they're the trying to do it as part of the budget process. Okay. So and the, and as the part town... of the budget process that they're preparing. And they're saying that this year, um, they're not expecting as much of an impact, but the following year is when they expect a wave of impact. Um, this year, they're, they're keep trying to keep the staff whole, and I kind of get it because, you know, you don't want to get rid of staff that's present, you know. They're looking at ways of, okay, you've done without this person for a number of months, so maybe you don't need them. And I think that's part of this. Oh, boy. Yeah. So as I recall the old process, and, and this is the other thing, Liz, you're coming in in a brand new government that it, right. uh, where the town council is essentially building the plane while they're flying the plane. Mm -hmm. um, as I recall, Dave, um, David, when the finance committee in the fall in the old process would ask you to come in, would ask the police to come in, the firefighters, I take it the assessor's office to come in and, and present what their needs were for the coming year. Do I have that wrong? Um, that's basically so what happened that, right, that was actually supposed to happen, but then COVID hit and we got nowhere with all those meetings. Uh, the meetings generally take place in February and March. Oh, I was going to okay. say, that was the uh, beginning of the year. For the, fiscal, for the fiscal budget um, starting in, in July, right? Is that right, uh, July right. 1? Okay. Mm. But that didn't happen this year, is that right? Um, it did. I mean, uh, but it wasn't a public meeting or anything of that sort. It was with the um, the manager and the um, interim finance director, Sonia Aldrich. And um, the feeling I got was, you know, even from the time I got here, they did not want to fill the position. And if they did, um, they were sure that that was going to be uh, a part-time position. Okay. You know? But the, so the, so the finance committee that's part of the town council with two additional um, non-voting volunteers, um, that that whole business of, of of the assessor's office coming in and making a presentation to the to the finance committee that didn't happen this year is that right? That is correct. Okay, and that happened last year, David. Yeah, it did. It, it's happened every year before this year. Every year, yeah. So okay. Obviously, it became for this when we had the slack board, it became sort of just wrote. You just went down yeah. and said hello and left again. Oh. But uh, the finance committee is paying a lot more attention. Well, yeah, I guess the other thing crosses my mind, Liz, you have to make a, a list in the back of your mind what things you can just stop doing. I mean, like David said, we send out the notices, but if you don't get more staff, then you can't send those out. You have to comply with the state law. But 
you're gonna have to cut off stuff that you're doing nice stuff. Well, and that's kind of some of the stuff that, um, you know, has been shifted over. I mean, I, if I've got one person on board in my office, I really don't want to share her with other divisions. So where does the staffing decision stand right now? Has, has a decision? Right now, um, what they're doing is the people that were at Central Services, um, there's a gentleman named Stephen Casey. Um, he's being trained on our systems to do some data entry. He's doing some data entry on permits. Um, but right now that's only on a part-time basis. And uh, we may also have, I'm not sure her last name. Let me look it up here. So that um, Stephen Casey is being, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Stephen Casey okay. is, being, is being lent to you from another department? From the collector's department. Okay, thank you. And then um, Cindy um, Carey is also a member of that department and she may also be trained uh, on doing uh, some data entry for us and things like that. But it isn't appraisal work or anything like that. It would be simply, you know, taking some relief off of, off of Teresa, um, maybe doing some car adjustments and, and things that they're familiar with. So that's sort of an ad hoc arrangement, is that right? Um, right now it would be the interim for the following fiscal year. Okay. Okay, so and, that, and that's the proposal at this point, and maybe using um, some of our consultant services through Roy Bishop to pick up some of the appraisal permits and things like that, so we can try to meet our cyclical requirement. So is there any value for the chair of the board of assessors, which I think I still am until somebody throws me out, um, to have at least have some contact with the uh, Andy Steinberg about this concern about assessor office staffing? Well, I think right now. Andy Steinberg? I'm sorry? Why would you contact Andy Steinberg? Because he's the chair of the finance committee. Oh, okay. Is he? Um, yes, I, I'm pretty sure he is, yeah. He's the current chair of the yeah, finance I'd committee. I'd be awful careful about going around Paul. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Like, I mean, with this COVID thing, everything's up in the air. So you're not going to get anything permanent now. Definitely not permanent staffing. So as and long that's as the you feeling I got. Job, I'd wait until you get through this mess. Uh, and like somebody implied, you know, this is going to be a year that we'll probably get through. It's next year that's going to be the tough one when the revenues are going to have to get cut back in people. Mm -hmm. um, so as long as you can get the hands, even if they're temporary, if you can get the hands right. to do your work, I sort of tread water right now. I, th I think part of it is, is um, you know, it takes at least a minimum of six years to make somebody useful in the assessor's office as far as training. Um, and it, it's a highly technical field. It's not something that you can take someone on and just say, hey, go at it. You know, it takes a while to get somebody actually productive. So, so, so I what think you, so more what than anything, I just want to let the public and the administration know that the assessor's office is more than just processing new construction. Yeah. And so for now, so for now, Liz, you, 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 I get that you're going to be satisfied with having a lot of the clerical work done uh, to relieve uh, Teresa, who, who right. was in the past. Was Teresa full time in the past? Yes. Okay. So she's going to be relieved. So you're going to have two. Or are they part time? Are they designated? Or can you express them? At any time, or at this point, I've only had a couple hours with um, Stephen, and that was only to give him a video to learn how to do the camera system, basically. Mm. Um, but Teresa tells me he does he does know how to adjust vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if even uh, uh, Stephen and um, Cindy can, you know, adjust some of those vehicles for Teresa. Mm. Um, so that that's something she can be taken off of, and I can assign something more complex to her. I think that would be a good idea. So this is all understood as being temporary? Yes. Not permanent? Right. Okay. But it sounded like the Board of Finance and the, and the um, or I shouldn't say the Board of Finance, the Interim Director of Finance, the uh, manager, wanted to make it a half-time position. And not this fiscal year, but the following fiscal year. And this fiscal year, I'd survive with you know, the temporary and the, the vendor services, which I have no objection. Who, who um, pays for the vendor services? Pardon me? Who pays for the vendor services? Our budget. The general budget. Okay. So and we have some left over. 
So I'd, I'd I'd make sure you use that budget item up. Make sure you use that. That's <laughs> best way you think he can use the outside consultant. All right. Okay, just so I'm just so I'm not operating under a misunderstanding. I thought Teresa was full time now. She yes. is full time now. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, she's flying like a. Uh, she's just flying around trying to trying to meet everybody's expectations, and uh, they even have her doing the postage for the entire town. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and Teresa has wow. been Teresa has been working for you, Dave. How long? Oh Christ. Uh, the, the whole time. It's not time. that long, that no, that long Dave. Uh, probably at least 16, 17 years. Okay. She's really proficient and she's very helpful and she's open to new things. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, hang on to her as long as I can, really. Um, I guess, Liz, it'd be good to just, just have a staff update each meeting we have. You know, okay. it doesn't have to be this long, but to keep us informed. Okay. I, I just want you to keep it on your radar, and if someone should, um, you know, come in your sphere, uh, maybe you could give them a little enlightenment as to oh. the, the role of the assessor's office. Okay. There were two other topics on this on this list here. Do we want to address those, Liz? Okay. Um, let's see the budget. I guess um, I wanted to know if there's anything that your board needs that you can think of that needs to be, um, you know, brought over into the next year's budget that I haven't addressed. No. Okay. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but we normally have not been involved in the budgeting. Correct. Does yeah. the board have their own separate budget? No, no, we don't. No. Okay, so your board expenses are also in the expenses of the assessor's office. Yes. Okay, so that's good to know. I, I view us as, I mean, um, I, I got on here and I simply drifted with the flow, but, um, but basically I, I viewed our function as, as, over, as sort of an oversight function. So that's, right. yeah, that's some, what I understand. Some communities do it differently and I wanted to make sure that I hadn't neglected your needs. Well, so it's we're here to help you, Liz, any way we can help you. It well, sounds to me, it you. sounds from what Davis described that the, the, uh, the function of this board has evolved over the years. Yes. Maybe, maybe devolved is the correct, correct, correct term. I don't know. <laughs> That's but, a good uh, way to go. Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate the assistance that you give me and, um, and your support. And, uh, we really, um, well, it sounds like we need to learn more about, um, we could stand to learn more about, how the office operates so that we could maybe talk about it with um, other boards. Yeah, I think, you know, um, your, your, your participation as our liaisons to the other boards and um, other officials of the town might be valuable okay. because folks in the community recognize you as, um, you know, folks that they can reach out to and they're familiar with and trust your opinion. So I think that's important. Yeah, Les, you could maybe put together like a pilot presentation and run it by us um, and really highlighting the things that Amherst maybe does differently than other towns. I think that's a good idea. Just so we could be more educated and then you could use it later for the council or something. Sure. Um, I think sometimes folks will compare places uh, as busy as Amherst with a very transient population and 40,000 people with a, uh, a more rural and less demanding community. And, um, you know, that, that plays a very big difference. Uh, you know, as you know, I came from Windsor Locks and we had that little thing called the International Airport called Bradley. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though it was a small town and didn't have a large resident population, it was considerably challenging. Um, and, you know, each time you go to a different community, it is a different challenge. Um, yeah. Sometimes, um, you know, it's dominated by residential properties, but very challenging residential properties. Um, I don't really find the challenging residential properties um, so much as, um, I, you know, there's a lot to learn here. And um, because of your transient population, Teresa gets a lot from uh, car adjustments and things like that because these students move all over the place. Every time they move and they re-register a vehicle in another state, she has to do a, a correction of uh, vehicle taxes, excise taxes. So think about how many students are going to any one university and moving Excuse back to for, their home. Excuse me for a minute. Certainly. Okay. So um, um, anything else you want to talk about before we go in executive session? I 
don't not believe I missed anything. I'm not trying to cut you off. I'm just trying no, to. No. Okay. Um, what I did do, though, is um, I did submit our, our calendar of, um, it's, a, it's just a brief calendar. I was going to share that with you, gentlemen. I'll send okay. that to each of you. Thank um, you. It gives us the months of the year, and it tells us what reports or, or duties we have to do. And That's this is terrific. just a summary. This doesn't that, count any other auxiliary things that we do. That would be great. Um, the other thing that I have is a five-year perspective of where we were and yes. where we are. I forgot you showed that to us um, last meeting a while ago, and I wouldn't. I would like to have a copy of that too for my. I'll send it to all of file. Them so that okay. you have that because that's something that I've submitted to the uh, to the um, board of finance or okay. to the, the finance director. Okay. So um, now we're into the uh, executive session. Would you like to call that? All right. I'm. I'm gonna. Um, do we have anyone else on the on the? No, we don't. Okay. Um, Leah stepped out. Um, I'm going to uh, um, uh, authorize executive session to look at. Uh, by the way, are, some, are there some personal exemptions we're supposed to be looking at today too, or just the real estate abatements? Um, I think we went over the personal exemptions at our last meeting. Those were approved. Okay, so I'm 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 just real I'm, estate. Uh, I'm I'm ordering an executive session for to uh, to look at uh, the real estate abatements for this this coming fiscal year. Correct. Any, Correct. any objections current to that? Current fiscal year. I'm sorry. It's a current fiscal year. Well, these are involving tax bills, FY 2021, uh, right? FY 2020. Oh, these are abatements for 2020? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. Okay, um, yeah. all, right. all right. So Lee, we're gonna go into executive session. Any objection? No. Okay.